this one is um, a conflicting kit to look back on. Um, not necessarily the best memories. Mm. Um, it's this one here. This is a 2014-2015 away um, kit. Oh, no. That's yeah. not bad. Honestly, um, I wasn't a big fan of the sponsor, um, Macron. Yeah, you went from Nike to Macron over yeah. a number of years as well. What's the one That's you're wearing as well? Umbro as well. So you went Umbro to yeah. Nike to Macron as well. Yeah, we've had quite we've a had numerous. Few yeah, yeah. But I mean, to be fair, when I first heard about Macron, I was a little bit like, hmm. But I remember Macron made a really great kit for Napoli. Um, they have done. Um, they, like, so, Napoli was their flagship kit that they would do. Yeah. Yeah, and I remember the kits being pretty nice. Do you know what I mean? So I thought, okay, maybe maybe we'll get a nice kit. And yeah, it, mostly it was disappointing, if I'm being completely honest. It was mm. sort of a weird design. Like, you got the V-neck, but then you had, like, this weird little sort of thing around the edge that kind of stuck up. Sort of Cantona-esque, but really, like, short. It's like a, it's it's like a baby Cantona-esque V-neck collar. Yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. Like I said, back a bit branding, which wasn't the best either. Wasn't yeah, a fan no. of that. Um so, I mean, yeah, so that, I mean, the only reason I purchased this was because we made it to the FA Cup final. So this was the year where we beat Liverpool in the semis. Grealish had a standout performance. Mm. It's the thing, I think a lot of people, um, obviously with us coming back to the Premier League, um, well, it was two seasons ago now. I think a lot of people would have forgot that Grealish actually did play in the Premier League. That was probably standout performance up to that point. Um, and a lot of Villa fans knew at the time that, yeah, this kid's going to be something special. But, yeah, um, we struggled that season. I think we all we finished 17th. So mm. we were on our decline and, you know, almost pretty much, you know, in the Championship. I think it happened maybe the season after. Um, but we had some good players, though. Um, that was sort of the Ron Vla, um, Fabian Delph and Ben Teke era. Mm. Um, so we had some good players it just seemed like we couldn't sort of you know maybe the, the other players in the round that sort of core you know weren't quite to the same standard as those three but we had some good moments obviously Benteke is always a highlight of you know uh, Villa at the time that's where, we've, that's where we've seen the best of Benteke to be fair as well for me as well that Aston Villa performance in in that season 2014-2015 was awful as a neutral because they've been ever present in the top flight before that yeah. season as well and yeah. it goes to show that one and the Newcastle one previously in like 2009 I think and Leeds in 2003-4 yeah. you're never too bad to go down or you're never too good to go down because of your reputation yeah, 100%. 100%. And that's something that we've seen previously and it's just awful to see that a club of Aston Villa's stature and mm. the worldwide reach that you've got of the team went all the way down and it only came up in what 20... 2019-2020 the season you came back yeah. as well. and I'm yeah. glad you mentioned Jack Grealish as well against Liverpool because obviously that was a fantastic performance it was yeah. somewhere where he announced himself to English football but the world yeah. forgot about him the English football forgot about yeah. him because he was in the championship and there was those rumours I've told Salim about this and Salim who's on our podcast was a Mad Villa fan yeah. uh, as okay. well. he, was just, he was saying that there was that time in 2018 when you were struggling for money and he could have left for Spurs with Onoma yeah. coming the, the other way and three million pounds. I'm like, thank God that didn't happen because he would have <laughs> another player for Spurs. He wouldn't yeah. be the player, in my opinion, that he is now. Like. 100%. Yeah, I think he would have got sort of swallowed up at Spurs. Um, yeah, it's funny how things work out because, I mean, now he's sort of the most exciting player in English football. And I think, like you said, there's been probably a couple opportunities where he could have left. That being the more serious because we really were sort of out of money. We was almost bankrupt. So mm. um, it was just by the skin of his teeth that he, he kind of stayed. And he probably even, you know, felt like he needed to move at that point. Um, but, it, you know, it worked out for the best. And, you know, now we're in the Premier League and he's getting to show, you know, what he's capable of. All three of those players, Fla, Delph, and then Teke all left, I think, the following year, and then that kind of sealed our fate. Before we just wrap up this kit review, I just wanted to know, what kind of differences have you seen from Jack Grealish of that era, the 2015-16 era, to what you see of him now? It's, it's the level of initiative now that he takes in a game where it's, he, he feels, you know, him being captain and being a mature player, now it's like he feels like the incentive is on him to sort of take the game by the scruff of the neck, whereas before he was sort of like, he could have ended up being sort of just that flair player in the yeah. sense of, not to compare him to like a Ronaldo, for instance, but Ronaldo at a time at Man U was kind of like, you know, 
doing a few step overs, flare player, you know, he might score a nice goal so often, but it wasn't a consistent thing. But then once he stepped into his his own and became sort of mature, he became the guy. And that's sort of what's happened with uh, Grealish at Villa, where as time's gone on. And, and I think, to be fair, I think being in a championship allowed him to do that because um, we were kind of stripped strip back and, you know, it's like, okay, now it's time for, you know, someone to kind of step up and he was the guy. So mm. had we not had those seasons in the championship, I think the three seasons that was down, like it allowed him to grow into the player that he's become without sort of the pressure of being in the Premier League. So, yeah. yeah. How would you rate that kit personally for you, your rate of 2014-15, Kyle? I mean, yeah, I, I actually, like I said, I purchased it to uh, watch the FA Cup final, which we got spanked in. Mm. Um, so, yeah, not, not the best memories. Um, honestly, I'd probably give it a three out of ten. Yeah, I'll certainly do that. Three out of ten. I'm happy with that. Yeah, yeah. That was our review of the Aston Villa 2014-2015 away kit in white. Kyle, I just want to say thank you very much for your time today. Collection only podcast. Um, if you want to sort of listen to a podcast with regards to, you know, sort of um, achieving, you know, goals and, you know, uh, being consistent with you know, whether it's work, you know, home life, whatever it is, the kind of things that we discussed. So, yeah, collection only. Um, check us out. Any major platform. That's great. Thank you again for your time, Carl. Have a lovely no evening worries. and take care. Thanks for your time. Thank and this has yeah. been Check It Out.